Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone on Facebook Live. How are you guys today? Let me make sure to not restart my computer right now. Remind me tomorrow. <laughs> okay, hello, hello. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Please say hello as you are hopping on. Happy Friday. The Friday vibe is a very real thing. I don't know if anyone else agrees with me, but there's just something about waking up on a Friday and being like, it is motherfucking Friday, and it is a really big deal. Hello, Elizabeth. Good morning. Oh, and I see Allie's little bubble. Hello, Allie. <laughs> so fun when I start to, when you guys come on these lives a lot, I start to recognize like your little bubble when you say hello or you um, like put some hearts or something. Good morning, Hannah. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? How are you guys today? How are you feeling? It's Friday. It's a really freaking badass day. And I said over in, if you're not in my free group yet, Pleasure, Play, and Power for the Female Entrepreneur. I was over in there this morning telling them that I was going to go live at this time. And I was just writing like, I, I don't even know really why I wanted to go live at first. I was like, I just have so much energy of like so much wealth and abundance and um, like high vibe of the wealth of the vibe really. And I just was like, I need to share this with people. <laughs> I need to spread the wealth. Like my soul was just calling to me. My soul was guiding me of like, go live, like go share this with your friends, go share this with the people. Hello, Fawn. Hi. Hello. Hello. And it was so funny. It's, it's interesting. Cause when you go live because you have to, or because you should, or because some coach told you to, or because it says it on your calendar and you're coming from a different energy than when you're overflowing with vibes and you're like, Oh my God, I just have to share with people. My soul is screaming out to me to go live right now. Like there's just such a different energy. Can you guys tell people who go live because almost like they have to, or they should, or it's forced or, you know, it's like written somewhere that they have to do it this many times a week versus I'm overflowing with what I need to share with you right now. And like, it's, literally pouring out of me. I was sitting, <laughs> I was in uh, my group Embody, my group coaching program that's finishing this week. I was in there and I was like typing this morning. I was like, oh my God, I just have so much to say, so much to share. And um, I was like starting to like talk out loud. And I was like, I just need to go live because no one is here with me. And it's going to be weird if I start just speaking all the vibes to my animals, right? Like <laughs> they already have enough of these vibes for sure. Good morning, Tiffany. Hi. So good to see you too. Beautiful. Hello. Hello. So I want to tell you guys a story, okay? First of all, I want to tell you a story on today's live. Um, and then I also want to share with you kind of some pieces that you can take to implement in your own life in any way. But then I also want to open up a Q&A for the Activate Mastermind. The Activate Mastermind starts in six days. Six days from now, we are going to be getting on our very first group coaching call. And it is, let's see, six days till it starts. We start on Wednesday. And there's five spots left for the Activate Mastermind. I'm talking with a lot of you right now, but as of right this second, five spots open still that remain. Two women have already joined, so the group will be no more than seven people. But if you have related to anything I've been talking about lately, sex, sexuality, relationships, feminine energy, femininity, sexual energy, um, intimacy, masculine feminine energies, um, any of it, body image, body positivity, any of these things, you want to be inside the Activate Mastermind. The overall view of it, the overall arching theme is feminine embodiment, which I did an entire masterclass on. If you have not watched the masterclass yet, message me. I will send you the free masterclass. It's a 90 minute masterclass. We talk about what's feminine embodiment. Why is it important? You know, why is it the missing link in having what you want? And then really how to start embodying that feminine essence, that feminine energy, and how that's going to ripple effect into changing your entire life. This group is going to be profound. It is absolutely going to change your life in every single way. And we start next Wednesday. Fawn is inside. Yay, I'm so excited. So come join us. Let me know if you have questions, um, but put your questions in the comments. I would love to be able to answer those for you. But first, I want to tell you a story. Hello, Grandma. <laughs> My grandma's on. Amanda's on. Caitlin and Casey. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So happy to see all of you today. So I want to tell you a story, okay? And then we'll get to Q&A about the Activate Mastermind. So post them in the, co in the comments if you have them. So <laughs> I have a car, right? I had a car. Um, it was a 2009 Saturn View. 
And I drove that car. I, I bought it the, literally the same month that Joe and I got married seven years ago. It was my very first purchase because actually my grandma gave me her Chevy Lumina um, when I was 16. So I drove that all the way until I was 20. And then we sold that car and we got the Saturn View. And we get the Saturn view and we way overpay for it because we had no idea what we were doing. No idea. We were young kids. We walk in there. They saw it. They took advantage of it. We didn't know what to ask. We didn't know what to look for. We were just like, yeah, sure. And they made it sound like it was a really good deal. I remember driving off the lot, calling my dad and he's like, what did you do? <laughs> like you way overpaid for that car. I didn't know what I was doing. So we get that car and I think it's like my dream car and I'm so happy. Even though I overpaid for it, I didn't care. Nothing mattered. It was amazing. I drove it. Now, Saturns, if you've never had a Saturn before, um, they don't make them anymore. It went out of business. So getting your car worked on when the car place doesn't exist anymore, you have to pay a lot um, because they have to special order all of the parts for it. So every time I would get my car fixed and every time I would get my car worked on, it cost even more than it normally would for a different type of car because there was always like this upcharge with it. And my car broke down all the time all the time. And so I was driving this car and, but it still worked. It got me from A to B, got me from A to Z. So I was very grateful for it. Absolutely. I'm like, it's a car. Some people don't have cars. This is great. Um, Calandra says my first car was a Saturn. Yeah, totally. My husband had a Saturn too before when he was younger. And so I'm driving this car and it's breaking down all the time. We put so much money into it. Like the amount of service receipts that were in the glove box was ridiculous. I don't even want to know. I feel like I paid as much in repairs as I paid for the car that I already overpaid with, overpaid in the beginning. And I didn't know what I was doing. And so that's okay, right? So much learning lessons. So I have a story here. There's a point. So I'm driving this car and I just put like over $700 into the AC three weeks ago before I went to Charlotte, the AC broke again, which I've paid maybe $5,000 in this AC over its lifespan. It always breaks down and it never worked properly. It like kind of, it was very piss poor, like pressure. Um, and it was very lukewarm and it would be like very humid cold. It was really weird. No one could ever figure it out. I went to like six different mechanics in six different states. Nobody could figure out what was wrong with it. So I just kept pouring money into it to have them look. And they always thought they found the thing and they never did. And I was like, I don't know about you guys, but I am a diva when I am hot. I hate being hot. I love being cold. I keep my house at 68 degrees all the time. Like, and then when I sleep, it goes down to 65, 66. Um, I do not like being hot. So I'm very much so an AC junkie in every single way, which I know isn't good for me, but whatever. I'm going to die anyway. So <laughs> I'm driving this car. I put, you know, the thing in. I, they finally think that they fixed the AC. I drive away. A week later, the AC doesn't work again. And I'm like, what the hell? Well, then I start having some issues with getting the car to start. And three months ago, I put a new battery into it. Okay. So it was like three to five months ago, I put a new battery in it because it wouldn't start and like a jump box wouldn't even start it. And we had to get it towed to the shop and they put a new battery in it and it worked. And now all of a sudden it's not starting. It's not starting. So I'm like cranking it every time I drive and it's out of complete nowhere. Mind you, I finally paid it off. Like there was, um, $7,000 left on it. Last year, I just paid it off in full. I was like, done. I don't want a car payment anymore. I was so proud. I was so excited. I was like, I actually own a car. This is so cool, right? And so <laughs> I, I pay it off last year and I'm like, yeah, I get to drive a car that's fully paid off. Like, this is so great. And, you know, my husband would tell me things like we should get a new car. Like you really shouldn't be driving that. And like, you know, you deserve a new car. Like, let's get you a new car. And I kept saying, no, why would I do that? A, I work from home, so I don't drive that often anyway. B, um, it works fine, fine. It gets me from A to B, and like I paid it off, so why would I go get another car payment when I can just drive this one? So I was like milking it. And I've been going through so much transformation, even in the last six months since I paid the car off, of just like really stepping up into this kind of next level embodiment, which is so interesting with Activate starting. It's crazy, because we're literally gonna go through this together over the 12 weeks. So I'm going through this like next level embodiment and my car all of a sudden out of nowhere a week ago won't even barely start. So I'm cranking it. So every time I would drive somewhere, so like I took my dog to the groomer and I had to crank my car like the key three different times, finally take a deep breath and try again before it started. And I was like, listen, my husband is gone. So if my car breaks down, I'm screwed. 
Um, I have one friend, one friend that I know I could call here, but she has her own life and she was in school and she's doing things. Even last time I went to go get my car fixed, I had to Uber home because like I didn't have anyone to come pick me up. My family's out of state. Like I'm basically like, I'm just gonna have to Uber everywhere until Joe gets home at the end of next month. I don't know what to do. So I'm cranking it and I'm cranking it. It finally starts. And I'm just like, I'm in tears of like, what the actual fuck? Like I thought things were good. I thought like, okay, I paid the car off. I've, I'm, I'm in this space and I'm moving forward and I'm moving up and I'm so grateful and, I, and things are so great. Why is this happening? Why is it happening when Joe is gone? Why is it happening when it's hot as hell outside? Why is it happening when everything else, like I thought things were good. I thought things were great. And I'm like wondering what the hell is going on. And I was really upset. I was like screaming at the sky and I was like, what the fuck, God? Like, what's happening? What's going on? Why me, right? And you're just screaming, right? Any kind of struggle we're going through, we're angry about it. And we're screaming and we're mad and we're sad and we're frustrated. And I remember I would voice message my best friend, Shannon. I was voice messaging my coach. I was voice messaging my energy healer. I'm calling my husband. I'm just like crying every time I even try to talk about it. And I was like, I don't know how to go buy a new car. Like, I don't know about you guys, but my dad always did the car stuff growing up. My husband does the car stuff now. And a lot of women out there, like feminism, go be independent, totally support that. I get that I'm independent in every way. I spend most of my time alone. My husband's gone more than he's home. I'm very independent, but I give zero fucks about a car. I just do. I don't care about learning about cars. I don't care about learning how to change a tire. I can call AAA, whatever. <laughs> like, Call me, call me a diva, call me bougie. I don't care. That's just how I am. Like, I don't have a desire to learn about cars. I really don't. Um, so anyway, so I'm, I'm crying to everyone I'm talking to. And I allowed myself to be in the shit. I allowed myself to be upset. So when you're in a struggle, first of all, let yourself be a human. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to be mad. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be on your knees screaming at the sky. What the fuck, God? Why me? Why is this happening? What's going on? To feel isolated, to feel scared, to feel paralyzed by, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Why is this happening to me? right? Allow yourself to be human for a minute. There are so many different types of struggles that we all go through. It's part of the human experience. We are souls having a physical, physical body human experience. We're meant to endure some struggle. There's going to be contrast in our life. That's where the growth happens. That's where the magic happens, where we get to start writing the story of how we want to tell it when we look back, right? So good morning, everyone hopping on. Steph and Kate and Jennifer and Aislinn and Katie. Hello, hello. So good to see you guys. And Bridget says, I hate being hot too. Ugh, and I live in Florida. Totally. <laughs> yeah, ew, I hate being hot. Hello, Aislinn. Yay. So, okay, so we're going through, I'm like screaming at the sky, let yourself be human, okay? That's the first and foremost thing. It's not like spiritual bypassing of, it's all happening for me and I'm gonna frolic through the rainbows and I'm not gonna cry and I'm not gonna be upset because it's all happening on purpose. It, that's not being a human. That's like just burying what's actually happening. I let myself have that. You need to complete the cycle of the emotion. You feel stress, right? Complete the cycle. Feel the stress. Figure out what it's telling you. Let it complete its cycle. You're feeling angry. Feel the fucking anger. Let it go through its cycle. Let it complete. Like you have to go through the cycle. It's part of being a human, having real emotions, okay? So I did that. And then I lean into my support system. Thank God for them. So I talk to my coach. I'm talking to my healer. I'm talking to my best friend. I'm talking to my husband. We've got my little team. My little team talking to my spirit guides, right? We've got this whole team, both in the energetic astral realm and in like the physical human realm. I'm talking to all of them. And I'm like, okay. And then my coach asks me, she says, okay, who do you want to be on the other side of this? Okay, because everything that's happening on the physical external realm, the struggle that we're enduring is reflected of what is coming up for healing on the internal. So I was like, interesting. So at first I was kind of like, Ugh, okay, tell me that again, right? Like you're kind of pissed. You're kind of like a little baby and you kind of throw a little temper tantrum. But then I sat down with it and I was like, oh my God. This makes sense. She asked me, she's like, where do you feel like, where's the stability in your life? And I was like, I don't know. I don't, I guess I don't really have any. <laughs> it's like, things are always crazy. I live a really super like unstable life. Like we're moving all the time. Joe's gone. He's back. He's gone. He's back. We don't know where he's going to be ever. Um, and he's my rock, right? 
I was like, things are crazy. Like I, I went from business coaching into sex coaching. So like, I don't feel like I'm, you know, necessarily like fully grounded in that yet. Like it's still very, um, fresh of going from straight up business coaching into now creating all different types of programs and a totally different level of embodiment. Right. I'm like going through these different pieces. I was like, you know, it's just interesting. Like, I don't know where the groundedness, where the stability is because I was putting it in all these external things. So what was happening was I was giving away my power and not seeing that I am my own source of stability and that while yes, like having my husband is great, having a car is wonderful, having a home is beautiful, having my friends in a support system is great, having, you know, business transitions is great because it means you're following your soul's calling. But I was saying, okay, well, once Joe is home and once this looks like this, And once the car is working and once the bills are paid, right? And once I make this amount of money, then I'll feel stable. How often have you said that, right? So my car was just another example of the universe saying, okay, we're going to take the car out now. How is your source of stability now? Have you realized it's within you yet? And I was like, wait. Okay, so my car is breaking down and I thought it was a coincidence. And then I realized this is an inner reflection of what's going on on the internal. Am I making sense? Give me some hearts or some love if if this is resonating. So what I started to see was like certain things were getting plucked out of my physical and of my external so that I had to be reflected back to within me, which is why having a coach is so powerful because I didn't see it. I was too close to it. I was in the thick of it. But she was able to see and reflect back to me oh my gosh, this is creating this. My inner sense of I'm not stable, I'm not safe, I'm not supported, I'm not held, I'm not um, you know, grounded, ah, unless I have all of these external things, means that when the external things go, and more of them just kept going, that I was like feeling so off versus grounding and rooting myself into the fact that I am safe no matter what in my body. I am safe right? So notice when you're in the thick of a struggle, what is it asking you to heal? Where's the healing opportunity for you in the struggle? Now I know, trust me, feel the feelings, be a human, feel the thick of it, right? And then work with a coach or a friend who's going to reflect back to you or a therapist or someone, right? To reflect back to you what's coming up, journal about it, meditate on it, ask your soul what the hell is going on here? What is this trying to tell me, right? And really just start to see the healing opportunity for it. My car breaking down was not a coincidence. It was an opportunity for healing for me on the internal to find safety within myself and ask, who do I want to be on the other side of this? Who do I want to be on the other side of this decision and this struggle and this breakdown? Who do I want to be? And how can I start to ask questions from that space and start to decide from that space? Instead of me being in my fear and being in this present moment, who do I want to be on the other side of this struggle? And how can I be her now as I move through the struggle? Right? So really start to think about that. Really start to ground into that. Think about how do I want to tell the story looking back at this one day? Right? When I'm 85 and I'm looking back at my life, how do I want to tell the story of what's happening right now? When I tell my grandkids one day about this struggle, who do I want to have been in it so that there's no regrets? How can I be her now? How do I want to tell the story? You get to write the story. How profound is that? How life changing is that? How empowering is that? It's not happening to you. It's happening for you. Who are you going to be about it? Right? I know my um, one of my mentors, Melanie, she was telling the story. She said, literally, I live from this space every single day. She's like, I wake up and I say, when I'm 75 and I'm looking back on my life, how do I want to live it? Like every single day I live like I'm going to blink and then I'm 75. What do I want to do now? I'm as young as I'm ever going to be, right? You could be 45, 50, 60. You could be 20. You could be 30. It doesn't matter. You're as young as you're ever going to be in this exact moment. How are you going to live from the space of what you want to be able to tell the story as when you're 75? How would that change things? How would you love people? 
What would you say yes to? What would you say no to? Who would you be around? What would you do with your time? Because one day you're going to blink and you're going to be 75 or you're going to be 101 on your deathbed. I don't know how old you're going to be. And you're going to be looking back. Everything from your entire life is going to flash before your eyes. All of those really emotional moments. Who do you want to be on the other side of the struggle? How do you want to tell the story on the other side of the struggle? Right? How do you want to tell someone about this one day? So I went into it. So I go in. So the story's not over. Little did you know. I go into the dealership. I drive there. I crank my car a bunch of times to get to the freaking car dealership. Okay. I get there. Hello, everyone hopping on. It's so good to see you. Kayla and Lisa, Samantha, Ashley, Sarah, Lindsay. Good morning. Good morning. So happy that you guys are here. So I'm telling a story about my car. So here we go. So I get to the dealership and my car makes it. And I'm like, thank you, sweet baby Jesus. It's 90 degrees outside. I'm dripping sweat because my AC doesn't work. So I'm like, this is super embarrassing. It was like a 30 minute drive. I get there. I walk in and he says, I'm so sorry, ma'am. I'm so, so, so sorry. I tried to leave you a message. We actually sold both of the cars that you wanted. I was going in for two, um, two cars and I had them specifically picked out and I was like, this is the one. And I go in and he says, I'm so sorry. We sold both of them. And I was like, mother effer. I was like, this happened when I tried to buy a house one time too. I would be on the way to the showing and then the house would be sold. It was crazy. So I'm like, okay. So then I literally tell him, I said, he looks at me. He's like, you can tell he's so nervous. Cause he's like, I'm so sorry. Like we were holding it for you, but somebody wanted it and legally we have to give it to them. And I was like, it's okay. I was like, it's all happening for me. I'm not worried about it. What else do you have? And so we go sit down and he's like, ask me all these questions. And I find the perfect car for me. And what was so crazy. So I was going to get the car valued my car, like what would they would take for a trade in value. And I was so nervous because I'm like, the AC doesn't work. And the car barely starts, you know, and it's kind of like the movie Bridesmaids when Kristen Wiig get, pulls up to the bridal shower and she, they're having the valets trying to crank her car. And she's like, you just have to, you got to hold it a little bit. You got to crank it a little bit harder. And she's so embarrassed. That's how I felt. Like my car was such a disaster and it like barely started. And I'm like, okay, here's the keys. Like, go get the value of it. And I'm like looking at the car that I want. And the guy comes back and he says, I'm going to need the jump box. The car won't start. And I'm like, oh, you just have to, you just have to crank it a little bit harder. Like it'll start. Like I promise it got me here. And he's like, okay, well it literally won't start. And he's like, I work on, like I'm here. I, I do cars. <laughs> it's not starting. And <laughs> so he goes and I was looking at the car. I test drive the car and we come back around. And it was after I like sat in the car, I felt like the, the vibe of it. I felt into the energy of it. I felt into my soul about it. I have chills thinking about this. I'm like shaking. And I took a deep breath in the car and I was like, this is it. I was like, I don't even really need to see anything else. I want to look at one more just briefly to look at it. But like everything was elevated. Everything was, who do I want to be on the other side of this? This is the car I would be driving. It was fancy and it was adult and it was lavish and it was perfect and it was new. And it was, I mean, it's a used car, it has 17,000 miles on it, but it was so wonderful. It drove like a dream. I, you better believe I cranked that air conditioning. I fucking cranked it as high as it could go. And the guy's like, my hair is blowing back. And I'm like, I just have to test the air conditioning strength. Okay. It's very important to me when I buy a car. And so I'm driving it. It drives like a dream. I get back, we pull around. I still see the guy out there at my car with the jump box. And I said, the guy that was driving in the car with me was like, is this the one that you want? I said, yeah. And we looked at one more. I didn't like it. The second I saw it, I was like, nope, the other one's my car. I just knew it in my soul. I didn't understand all of it yet. I didn't even remember, remember at that moment how much it costed. I was like, this is just what I want. And this is what I'm going to have. Like it was the whole Ariana Grande seven rings song. Like I, I see it. I want it. I got it. Whatever she says. <laughs> so I, I drive up and I'm like, this is one. He's like, all right, let's start the paperwork. Go over to the guy that's at my car. And I said, did the jump box get it to start? And he said, it didn't. The jump box wouldn't even start it. And I was like, are you kidding me? And I was like, well, it's not the battery. I just got a new battery months ago. And he was like, I think it's the alternator. And I was like, oh my God, an alternator would have been expensive. And I was like, shut up. The second that I said yes, based on who I wanted to be, not who I was in the moment, my car died. Like I wouldn't have even been able to drive home if I wanted to, because literally the second that I said, yes, I proved that I am safe. I am held. I am supported. I am being divinely guided. Always. I actually have nothing to fear. Fear is an illusion. 
Now, fear is important because it like, tells you not to go down the dark alley. That's a very primal instinct, fight, flight, or freeze. But the fear that I was creating of like, everything is caving in on me. Nothing is happening. Oh my God, I'm screwed. I'm isolated. I'm not safe. And going into this whole tailspin, letting myself feel it, but realizing it was all an illusion. My car breaking down was a physical manifestation of what was happening internally. The universe plucks my car out and I'm forced to go, fuck, my back is up against a wall. What am I going to do? Who am I going to be about it? Who do I want to be? And I said, hell yes to the car that I wanted. Hadn't even looked into all the details yet. From there, I literally, my car didn't start even with the jump box. And I was like, oh my God, this is insane. And my coach told me today, she's like, this is going to be in the book you write one day. Like it was so divinely, perfectly timed. And I went in, I got all the paperwork done. We got everything switched over. It was perfect. It was beautiful. It was seamless. And then I drive home and I'm driving home in tears, like in awe of the life that I have intentionally created. Things have not been handed to me. Things have not just been easy and butterflies and rainbows and, oh, it must be so nice to be her at all. I'm like getting emotional about it. I have created this life through intention, through being in my power, through going through the thick of it and allowing myself to be human, from working hard, but also resting hard, for, from playing hard, from showing up day in and day out even when it's not easy, even when it's not perfect, even when things don't sell out, even when things fail, even when things flop, I still show up. I've been doing this for almost five years, showing up online. It was not overnight. There were days that nobody watched my lives. There were days that nobody liked my shit. There were days that I was disgusting about the way that I sold. There were days that was awful. Like I've been through all of it. And I'm not saying you have to go through it. I coach so that hopefully we can collapse time together and maybe you can not make as many of the mistakes that I made over the last five years. But I was thinking about it and I was thinking of like the crazy income gaps that I've had over the last five years of like from making zero dollars an hour, from making like barely a thousand dollars a month to then going up to damn near $20,000 a month and then being in the middle and then being up and down and around and in the middle and like all of these things. And I was, and it was so crazy. My coach was talking to me about it and she was like, you always thought you would feel safe with all the money in the world. And you real because it's always like, well, once I have $10,000, once I have the husband, once I have the followers, once I have X, then I'll feel safe. Then I'll feel stable. Then I'll feel secure. And it's not the case. I can tell you, I've made more money than I can ever dream of. It's insane. And it didn't make me feel any safer. In fact, I was in more fear because I'm like, oh my God, now fuck, there's shit tons to lose. It's very different when you got nothing to lose than when you got all this money that you've created and you're like, what if this all goes away tomorrow? Right? The fear is going to be there. It's reflecting on the internal. You will not feel whole or satisfied or safe until you decide to now. Not once you hit this, it's now. And then you create from that space and you're creating on a foundation of love and feeling safe, but also listening to your soul and making big, scary risks and taking leaps of faith from a space and a foundation of power versus from a foundation of fear and desperation and anxiety and creating from there. Like what's going on internally right now that's manifesting in your present? And even if you make all the money with fear and anxiety and, and desperation as the foundation, promise you'll lose it. And if you don't lose it, it's not going to feel good. And you're going to be like, what the hell? I thought that this was it. I thought that this was the grand finale. Like once I make all of this money, then I'll finally be happy. And you're like, I made all the money. I'm still not happy. What's going on? Or I thought finally, once we got married, then it would just heal everything. And things still aren't good. There's shit that's going on. It's healing. All it is is a healing opportunity, you guys, to clear more of the bullshit and call in more of the vibes and the abundance and the magic and the light and the radiance and the brilliance and the love that is available to you, that is meant for you. Who do you want to be? 
And that's what I want to ask you. The Activate Mastermind is literally all about this. Don't make the decision, well, where am I right now? How am I going to make this happen? Yes, there's logistics and you need to be able to like put food on the table. I get that. I'm, not, I'm saying literally there are some people that this is not going to work for. I support that. I respect you in that. I've had many conversations with you guys about that. But who do you want to be? And what decisions and investments and opportunities is she saying yes to? Your soul calls you to things. Your body, it's like when I had girls watching the Feminine Embodiment Masterclass the other night and they're like my whole, I was crying. The energy was vibrating through my body. I was like feeling this, like the second girl that signed up, she was like literally my full body was like a hell fucking yes. I have to make this happen. And she signed up like that. Your body knows, your soul knows. Don't let your mind and where you are in this current moment stop you. And it doesn't have to be the Activate Mastermind. Insert whatever you're thinking about or whatever opportunity is available to you here. But who are you gonna be about it, right? Decide to be the person now who you want to be on the other side of it. When you graduate, in, uh, activate in 12 weeks, and you're looking back, how do you want to have told the story? Or 12 weeks from now, at the end of summer, are you gonna look back and say, damn, there's another summer gone. I wasn't her, right? Who do you want to be? How do you want to tell the story? Make decisions from that space. So, now that I've said that and shared my whole story, such a crazy thing, right? Good morning, Andrea. Hello. And Crystal, if you're still here, hello to you too. Hello, hello. Um, how are, okay, so what questions do we have about Activate? Does anyone have questions? I wrote a few down that I've been getting in my inbox, just like FAQs that a lot of people have been asking me. Um, okay, so when? When is Activate? People have been asking me that. I thought I was clear about it, but that's okay. <laughs> you can still ask questions that I thought I was clear about. That's why repetition is so important. Um, activate the Mastermind. It's 12 weeks, and it starts next Wednesday. Wednesday, the 17th, 15th, Wednesday, the 15th, excuse me, we have our very first call. The calls are going to be every Wednesday for about one to two hours, depending on how long we go, but it won't go more than two hours at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, one to two hours, depending, and we're going to dive in. It's one-on-one -on -one attention on every single call. So it's not where it's like a giant group call and you're like, I didn't even get my question answered. This is a call completely devoted to coaching each and every single one of you, specifically one-on-one. -on -one. And what happens in a group setting is one person might ask something or one person might be going through something and it ignites permission for everyone else to share their stories as well. And it's really freaking powerful, super freaking powerful. So one-on-one -on -one attention in a mastermind setting starts next Wednesday, the 15th is our very first call, okay? There are seven spots total, five of them are left. So let me know um, if you wanna grab one of those. Um, how much is it? How much is it? It is um, 888 a month for the three months. So whatever that is times three, but you can break it down into monthly payments of 888. Um, and if you watched the Feminine Embodiment Masterclass that I did, which is a free 90 minute masterclass all about this stuff, um, I did put a special offer at the end for the Activate Mastermind that only the masterclass attendees get access to. So if you want the replay, it's live through the weekend, message me and you can, you could even cheat and scroll to the end and get the deal that I gave you for the Activate Mastermind at the end of it. But I can't tell you about it now because you have to watch the masterclass. Good morning, Theo. Hello, Cicely and Ashley. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're nearing the end of this live, but you have to go back and watch the story I shared because maybe I'm biased, but I thought it was very powerful. <laughs> it was such a crazy day yesterday, and I'm like in such gratitude and celebration and abundance vibes that I was like, I need to share this right now. I need to tell people this story. So, okay. So yeah, so it's got, you have the group calls and then we also have a group chat. So there will be a group chat with the, the eight of us. So seven and then me um, total in this group chat where we will be able to get daily support ongoing through the 12 weeks. So anything you're going through, business, relationship, 
um, you know, the work that we're doing in the feminine embodiment work, anything that you're going through. Um, Michelle says, don't scroll to the end though, because it was an awesome class. I love you. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, but you can, uh, go in the group chat and then share. There's also a Facebook group for like the longer stuff, or if you want to go live about something and you're really going through things and we can coach you that way and support you that way. But there's also the group chat. And I was a part of a mastermind that had a group chat. And at first I was like, Oh, my phone's going to go off all the time. I would plug in there and like instantly based on other people's celebrations and other people's wins and other people's struggles and all of this, like you're instantly lifted. It's a crazy thing. I love one-on-one -on -one coaching because I also really like the attention on me, which you do get in a mastermind as well. But there's something about being plugged into a group of next level women who are saying hell fucking yes to the work that we're all doing together and saying yes to this next level embodiment, which is what I've been walking through. So I get to guide you through it and it's truly going to be such an amazing time. So the group chat, the group, um, a secret Facebook group, and then the calls and everything is private and confidential. So anything we dive into stays in the group and you get to go as deep as you want to go. It's not going to be easy. There are going to be tough questions, hard reflections, things that come up where even um, when you plug into a group with me or you plug into my coaching, you're plugged into my energy outlet. So there is rapid transformation happening because you've plugged into something so much greater and it starts to go quick. And there's times where it feels like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, what's happening? And trust me, I felt it. I literally just told you guys a whole story about how I felt that, right? But then the freedom and the liberation and the empowerment on the other side of it will absolutely change your life. This group is going to change your life in the best of ways, relationship-wise, sex-wise, uh, power-wise, creativity-wise, how you show up in the motherfucking world, how you attract things, how you magnetize things, how you make it through things, the relationships that you have in your life, your business and how you make money and how you create programs and how you go to your job, like all of these different pieces. This is not just for entrepreneurs. This is for anyone who is being called to this feminine embodiment work, to reclaiming your power, to activating your feminine energy for the effortless magnetism, for the vibrant, intimate relationship, for the steamy sex life, for all of these things, this is for you. Okay. So that's really what I have for, um, like main questions I've been getting a lot. I can send you the masterclass. Let me know. Theo said she's going to go back and watch. Amazing. Let me know what your thoughts are. Um, does anyone else have any questions or anything that they want to share in the really awkward d uh, time delay while I sit here and just smile at you <laughs> until, until comments show up? Yeah, just message me. I have a sales page for it. I can send you. You could cheat and go to my website. It's on there, um, but you can message me. I can send you the link. Um, the master class is in my free group, but I'm happy to send you the link, and you can just message me for easy access to everything because I'm going to send you links. Um, if you do, if your body and your soul is saying yes, but your mind is freaking out, message me. Let's talk about it. I would love to hold space for you and support you through it. Um, I'm not here to convince you at all because I know that these final five spots that are going to fill are with the exact woman that was created for this. There's no need to push or force, manipulate or control when you believe in the greater vision of it that I'm held and supported and guided and the women who are meant to be in the mastermind will be guided to it as well. I get it. I was a lot, I'm a, unfortunately, uh, a lot of times have been a last minute or in my life. So I'm kind of one of those people that watches, reads, thinks about it, sits on it, thinks about it some more, talks to my husband about it, sits with it some more, tries to like be logical about it. But then I feel like I'm just so drawn to it. And then at the last minute, I'm like, I'm all in. Okay, fine. Take my money. Just pick me. Right. I've definitely been that person. So I know I attract people like that. So if you're a last minuter, let me know, um, even if you're just still thinking about it and you have questions or anything you want to be talked through about it about. Um, that sentence didn't make sense, but message me. We can talk about it. Good morning, Melinda. Hello. Awesome. So let me know how I can support you guys. I hope that this story was helpful. I hope that this is able to empower you in certain future struggles that you might endure or a struggle you might currently be enduring. Know that you're just writing one hell of a comeback story and you will make it through this. I absolutely promise you that. Um, and I'm super excited to work with those of you who decided to join us inside of Activate or in anything else in the future. I love you. I am rooting for you always. Have the most incredible Friday and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.